DevX recently conducted our own survey of development professionals on big data, and we asked first, you know, what they thought the potential was, but whether they also thought that development professionals were ready for, for that potential. Yeah. So two to one professionals indicated that, you know, this is really exciting time, the data revolution, there's so much potential, mm -hmm. but at the same time more than 50% indicated that, you know, development as a sector is not ready to do what needs to be done with the data. Right. So I wanted to get your perspective on that first. It's very interesting. I think, so in our, in our report, we look at lots of different examples of big data use that's already happening. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think probably we know about big data use in developed countries. That's kind of relatively well documented. So for instance, in the UK, the Office of National Statistics is experimenting with web scraping, that kind of thing for looking at inflation data. But I was really struck by the fact that big data analytics is already being used in developing country contexts in really interesting ways. And um, the thing I found even more striking was that some national statistics offices, which we know, you know, they've been massively underinvested in, they don't have enough political independence, they don't have the capacity to do lots of the things that they need to be able to do. But one of the things they are already, already using is satellite data which I think is really interesting. So looking at things like um, light emissions as a proxy indicator for poverty. So it's already, I think it's already happening. Yesterday during your panel, you mentioned how important institutional change is for this all to, to even be possible. So I was wondering if you could speak a little bit on that. Yeah, so I think the big thing there is that, um, so first of all, we need to um, gather more data and the data on the right people, but we also need to make much better use of the data that already Collecting. And I'll give you an example. So the World Bank has um, a, a fantastic database. It's called I2D2. It's not a character from Star Wars. It's actually an income poverty database. Okay. 600 household surveys that show you income poverty down to the level of the individual. This would be hugely useful. This is a, you know, a global resource, but you can only access it if you're a, a World Bank staff member. So agencies like the World Bank and other international agencies should be opening up all their data. The bank recognizes this and in fact since 2013 it's had an open access policy. Um, I think what there has been in the past at the World Bank, just as we've seen in the case of national statistics offices in, in, at the country level, there's been an underinvestment in data. So to be able to open up the World Bank's database, they need to, they need to go and negotiate agreements with each country and they need to, in many cases, pay for that data but that's an investment that they should be making. Hmm. And you also mentioned yesterday a little bit about maybe donors impeding NSOs, uh, especially yeah. in the way that they're requiring data, who they're employing to get the data, and I heard that a couple of times yesterday. So I was wondering how do we, maybe what that problem looks like and how yeah. we move forward there. So I think, uh, you know, in many cases, much of the data that we do have wouldn't be captured in the first place absent the donors. Right. So let you know we need to be clear about that. So UNICEF, um, USAID, you know they and, and the World Bank they kind of administer or help give support to do, doing these big internationally comparable household surveys. So their role is really important. But the problem is that they either that those surveys aren't always sufficiently well coordinated. So you have kind of peaks of data, and you then you have droughts of data. So either they're kind of in a, they're, they're happening at the same time or there's too big a gap between them. You don't have a sort of continuous flow of information. Um, so they just need to be able to work together better and to be thinking about what the country, what government, what information is it that governments need to know rather than what is it always that donors need to know. Where else are you, were you kind of impressed by your findings or what were some standouts of wow this is working really well. Maybe it was an unusual collaboration or um, an innovation that you were surprised? One sort of broad takeaway that I found surprising is that actually to do this stuff better is relatively, is relatively cheap. So um, it costs about a billion dollars a year globally for all countries to do household surveys better. And if you, if you think that Kenya is already saving a billion dollars a year, so that's just one country, is saving a billion dollars a year by opening up its procurement data so you can compare prices, you see you know, this, the data revolution is going to pay for itself.